I, I've done this for so long to so many different audiences, I already know most of the arguments, I'm, the knee-jerk arguments I'm gonna get, okay? Throom targets are lightweight, weatherproof, take thousands of rounds of shooting and make shooting fun. Pick up a set for your next range trip. So uh, I've got these set up for schools. This church has a school, but you could translate it to church, to a business, to anything else. Having guns on campus is a bad idea. It's too dangerous. Okay, would you let a cop resource officer? Oh yeah, we, so, but don't they have a gun? Well, well, yeah, but so guns aren't a problem because you actually want that gun. How's that gun different than another gun? But, 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 so it's just a knee jerk. Guns are actually a good thing. So you don't want a gun on campus. Who are you going to call when the active shooter shows up? Somebody with a gun to come stop this thing. So you want the solution five to 10 minutes away instead of 30 seconds away. It's, it's, it's emotional, it's knee jerk, it's political, but it's definitely not logical. We should leave this to the professionals, the cops, because they're so highly trained, and they're not. Cops are minimally trained. Most cops are minimally trained. Most soldiers are minimally trained, right? Some are highly trained. The ones, if you take a, 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 a combat arms guy in our, on his second tour in Iraq, and he's been there for nine months, he's tuned up by that point. But the average soldier is minimally trained. And even if a cop is the love child of Chuck Norris and Clint Eastwood, is the absolute most tactical cop in the world if he doesn't get there until five minutes after the first shot. I'm not going to say he's irrelevant, but I'm going to say he, all he's going to do is determine whether there's 30, 40, or 60 people shot. He's not going to keep it at a low number. He can't. Not his fault. Right? And sometimes when cops are present, they don't act aggressively because they're people. And some people won't act aggressively whether they're cops or not cops. Right? This is, again, Historically, not a theory, this is historically what happens when we leave it to the professionals. I don't want those numbers, so why in the world would I have a plan that historically gets me those numbers? School staff don't have law enforcement training, so they won't know what to do. This is the they don't have law enforcement training. That's why I want the SRO here, but not the calculus teacher, because they don't have law enforcement training, so they won't know what to do. You don't need law enforcement training. Yeah, but Marcus, it's 13 weeks long, police academy. That's 13 weeks of police training. Yeah, how much of it is guns? Yeah, how much of it is, yeah. You, you don't need the calculus teacher or the church security team member to do a, a traffic accident report, to guard evidence, to you know, all the other stuff that cops learn about that they have to do, right? You don't need law enforcement training. David, Pastor David George in Washington had zero law enforcement training. Didn't really hinder him much. Fix Stacy. Didn't have any law enforcement training. Didn't, didn't tend to hinder him much. Um, what to do will be very clear. I think it'll be very clear. It's not a, it's not a calculus equation. It's, there's a guy in here shooting people with a gun. That'll be pretty simple what needs to be done. But if it makes you feel any better, that's that abbreviation. But if it makes you feel any better, what if we train them? So if you're talking about armed church staff or armed school staff, or what if we train them to the same standard? Require the same standard. We require the security team in the church or the school to meet the same police qualification standard. No, no. Well, now where's your logic? We, they meet or exceed. Arkansas, you have to shoot 80% on the police qualification standard to be a cop. What if we make the church security team or the school security be 90%, which ain't hard. No. Then it, now you know it's just knee-jerk stuff. How much law enforcement training did the Parkland SRO have? Over 30 years. He had been a law enforcement officer for over 30 years. That didn't help much, did it? So my brother retired. My brother and I both got in law enforcement very late in our lives. I think he became a part-time two cop in Arkansas when he was 46, 47, became a full-time cop when he was 50. Before he ever took an oath and put on a badge, he was a master level IDPA shooter. What's that? IDPA is one of the shooting competitions. Master level means you're, it's the highest level. It means you're pretty smoking fast and accurate with a pistol. He was that way before he ever pinned on a badge. When he was an English teacher, he had that gun skill. He had the gun skill and his character when he put on a blue shirt and a badge. Neither of those changed at all. But if you said, would you want Mike Monk, the English teacher, carrying a gun in school? Oh, hell no. That's way too risky. That's crazy. Okay, now he has a blue shirt and a badge. Is it okay for him to have a gun at school? Yes, please. It, it's, it makes no logical sense at all. But he might shoot the wrong person. Well, track record says that's never happened. Zero percent chance for citizens, but not for cops. Police have.
Nope. Nope. There's he is. These are mad dog crazy killers. The average citizen can't be expected to go up against them. No, they're generally punks that barely know how to make their dad's gun go bang. I fear the day that somebody with your skill snaps and goes inside of a school or a church or a mall. It, it will be a slaughter. It will be in the, in the hundreds. They're, they've generally just been in, if you study, there's a lot, I mean, it's not the majority, but there's a huge amount where there's malfunctions because they just bring their dad's gun and they don't know how to make it work. Teachers are, at the best, would carry a handgun. They can't be expected to stop these active shooters who often have rifles. Yeah, they can. Lots of examples of a average trained people with handguns because they got the guts and they're there, go up against somebody with a rifle and they stop them. Again, if there's a blue asterisk, it's a cop. If there's no blue asterisk, it's a citizen. And here's the one you get the most often, but cops are gonna show up. I was actually at a school board meeting where they brought this deputy in to, for the purpose of doing this because the school was thinking about going armed. The deputy, and I'm exaggerating, but just a little. I'm telling you, if I come in here and one of you guys is holding a gun, you know, I don't know who you are and I'm gonna shoot. You know, I don't mean to, I don't wanna hurt you, but if I come in here and you're holding a gun, I'm gonna shoot you because that's the way I've been trained to respond. Ooh, then we, we probably shouldn't go armed. I said, Mr. Monk, what do you think? I think you're in the city limits. If you're going to base your plan on protecting your kids and faculty off what a county deputy wants, then you're forfeiting this game. Because there ain't going to be a county deputy on this campus for 10, 15 minutes. You might get a city cop five or six, eight minutes after the first shot. But they brought that deputy in here to say that. And it's like, you, if you're going to try to make his life easier when he gets here, you're going to have a slaughter. So it's just crazy. And if you make this argument, and it's never happened except the one time that I showed you yesterday with two extreme rare examples, but you would also logically have to make the argument that, okay, we don't want off-duty cops pulling their guns in active shooter attacks. Because couldn't a responding cop confuse them? Just Yeah, but no one would ever say that. If there's an off-duty cop at the mall or your church or your kid's school when an active shooter kicks off, do you want that off-duty cop to draw his pit? Hell yes, stop this thing. It, but, okay, what about the calculus? No. Because the cops that show up eight minutes later could misidentify him. Well, he ain't going to have his gun out eight minutes later. He's going to be on his third cigarette eight minutes later. Okay? And that's why it's never happened except for the weird one in Nevada. Because if someone there stops it, whether it be an off-duty cop or a citizen, it's over in the first minute, and the cops show up four minutes later. So do you want to make a plan? And a lot of cops um, will tell they love the lockdown drill because a lot of cops want the scene as easy as possible for them when they show up at the six or eight minute mark. So they're like, no, don't let the kids leave the classroom. Lock them down so when we come in, it's more simple for us. If the kids are all running everywhere. So I say, do you wanna make your plan, you wanna prioritize making life easier for the cops that show up in eight minutes or do you wanna make it to where it saves the most lives? I would rather have it over and treating the casualties when the cops show up than the cops show up and the guy's still shooting people. Are there any instances of, uh, like the one in Arvada where the police officer shot the good guy, where other CCW holders shot the good guy? No, armed citizens have never shot the wrong person okay. when they responded to an active shooter. Never. Uh, so when I go into schools, I get this one a lot, and this is where it really helps the fact that I've taught, right? Teachers are already too busy. They got too much to do. We don't need to burden them with additional things. Like, yeah, teachers are busy, and principals are busy, and counselors, everybody at school is busy, busy, busy. But when the first shot goes off, they ain't doing that no more. Everybody only has one job, and that's to save lives. Uh, and it's not a burden, because it, I don't know, and that's what they'll train it to. We're not going to make teachers carry guns. No one's ever suggesting that. That's the straw man. Take it to the extreme, right? What we're saying is volunteers that want to do it. So it's not a burden for them. They volunteer to do it. And if an active shooter shows up, they will not be a burden. It'll be a godsend if someone there is able to stop it in the first 30 seconds. Pedagogy is a fancy word educators love to use, which means formal educational training, teaching, learning. And so what I always tell them is, ain't no pedagogy going on after the first shot. There'll be some learning. There'll be a lot of learning, but there ain't no pedagogy going on. Right? But if the calculus teacher's care, he might snap and shoot t kids. Oh, really? That's where we got to go. We got to go to this extreme. So he's probably got a concealed carry license. He's probably carrying in Walmart and the movie theater and the dry cleaners and everywhere else. But when he walks magically across the campus line, he'll lose his faculties and start shooting kids. 
Yeah, cops could, don't cops Dorner? Don't cops snap too? Rarely, but they're people too. But when a cop snaps and uses his gun wrong, we don't say, well, let's take the guns away from all the cops. Because we know, yeah, a few of them snap, but it's still better for society for them to have guns. But if the calculus teacher's carrying a gun, the kids might take it away from him. Actually, it's more likely they would take it away from the cop. My brother, um, again, he started late in life, but he was, he's still pretty physically fit, especially more so when he was still doing it. But he would tell you, he's like 6'2". He would tell you, three football players, and he, it was in high school, three football players want me and my gun, they're going to get it. If they act together, I'm going to put up a fight, but three of them get me coming around a corner and jump me, they're going to get my gun because they know where it is, right? The school staff should carry it, or church staff should carry it concealed. No one knows if you got one or not, much less where it is. So would your school be more safe? What if I got a federal grant to pay for, let's say, eight cops in your school? Nothing, you don't have to provide anything. A federal grant, oh, yeah, almost every school would take them unless they're a real liberal, left-leaning, defund the cop type people. Okay, what if I get eight of your staff members and we train them to a higher level than the average street cop is? Nope. Nope. So you know it's not logical. What you should do is start with the results you want, use facts and logic to build a plan that will get you the results you want. Instead, what we see is they start with what they don't want, which is your plan, and then they just counter it with boogeyman crazy hypothetical arguments so that you, go, you get no change or you get some kind of change that doesn't affect. That's why we've had over 30 years of 30, 40 people getting shot. Because anytime you come up with a, a plan that actually has a good chance of having fewer shot people, there's boogeyman arguments that will back people back down. And there's misinformation. Sutherland Springs uh, shot 46 people, came outside, Williford uh, shot him. And th this lady was not a left-leaning crazy liberal at all, but uh, I'm at a function and we're talking about it, and she says, yeah, Sutherland Springs one in Texas. That guy shot like four innocent people when he shot that active shooter, didn't he? What? Yeah, that guy shot four innocent people. I mean, he got the active shooter, but he shot four innocent people. Where? No. <laughs> all this misinformation.